Hey, we all know our net work is our net worth, but how do we do it? How do we scale it? How do we fit it in at the right level of our prioritization? Because I know I'm the one who's always talking about get the, you know, prioritize your time in the order of closure. And I, I stick with that. But networking is one of those things that we kind of need to fit in during our downtime when we're in traffic. <laughs> Maybe not in traffic, but when we're at Starbucks waiting in line, when we're at the airport, uh, before work, after work. But it is simple today. We have these smartphones in our pockets. We have LinkedIn apps, Facebook apps, all the social media stuff that makes it simple to really have just a tiny little micro interaction with people and add value to their day. So me and Chad are going to talk today about how do you really network at scale and five ways to really work this into your routine and why it's so important and not something that you just do once in a while that to make it part of your habit. Like prospecting, cut out a little bit of time during the day. It doesn't take much. I'm talking about 15, 20 minutes a day. I did a video on YouTube about how, how to do LinkedIn in 15 minutes a day. People were like, oh, I can't do it in 15 minutes. Come on, you can. You just have to really focus. Hey, but before we get into it, I want to make sure you're checking out covideo.com. This video email is cutting through the noise. If you're looking for a way of connecting with people, we all have to get used to video, being on camera, uh, screen sharing, all of this stuff, you know, makes us a little little self-conscious, but it is so much more impactful. If you've seen the success I've had on LinkedIn with my videos, you'd get it. Also, are you connecting up with me on LinkedIn? Come on, don't be a stranger. Stop by, like some of my content as a little thank you for putting out a podcast for you. And I really do appreciate everybody who has done that. Uh, I really enjoy your comments, your likes, a little hatred now and then is okay too. But also, Nudge.ai and Pipedrive have a coupon code to get one free month. It's called Brutal Truth. Pipedrive has got some great new features. they got a lot of integrations. Make sure you're checking that out. You can integrate it with your phone, integrate your email. They also, if you're local, they will show you maps of where all your customers are. It's really becoming an insanely powerful product, and I love it. I've pretty much standardized on it, and I, <laughs> I'm on the phone with them all the time about what I'd like to see put into it. Same as with Nudge. I mean, Nudge, I just every morning get my prospect list. I send a copy to my VA. I highlight the things that I want done, the things that I'll do, and all of a sudden you're, you're rolling into the day uh, with information. It's like some, having somebody work for you 24-7. But enough about that. Let's get into this. And at the end, I'll sum up how things are going with the classes. Hey, Chad, let's talk about networking. I think this is something that uh, is, you know, something that people don't do proactively. But if the people who do it and have done it over time, when it's there for them, it's like money in the bank. Well, I mean, let's be real. The most important asset you have in sales is your network. Yeah. And if you don't work, if you don't, if you don't think about it proactively, go after how do I build it? And then I'll see people go out and get crazy about building it. So they'll go from like, you know, 500 connections on LinkedIn to like 4,000. And it's like, <laughs> you know, okay, now you got to go maintain that. Right. right? That you, is... You've got to spend the time to maintain it. Right. And the network is the most important asset that you have at your disposal through your entire sales career. That's it. You know, whether you're looking for a job, you're trying to get into a new account. If you're not part of the tribe, it is really hard. Everyone's talking about personalizing the pitch. But if you know somebody there and you have some kind of positive relationship with them, it is so much easier. Well, I mean, think about why people buy, right? They buy it. And today, uh, depending on what the size of the deal or what you know what your average deal size is you're selling, a lot of people are risking their careers by suggesting or or betting on what you're selling and betting on you. So people are obviously going to gravitate towards those people that they've worked with before, that they trust, that they have a relationship with, that they can be more candid with, right? And that takes time, just like any relationship, it takes time. So if you build that network and you have that in, it always gives you the leg up. Doesn't necessarily guarantee a win, depending on where that network person may be, but you'll have more information and, and more tools to use to mitigate the natural risk in any sales process. 
And I see too many people not doing it until they need it, and then it looks so insincere. <laughs> right? It looks desperate. Desperate, right. <laughs> they, you know, they connect with you, and then they pitch you, and you're like, that's not how you network. Right. You know, and even in my profile, I say, uh, like or comment on my content before you send me an invite. And maybe one out of 10 or 20 will do that. Because, and they didn't even read my profile. And it's like, I know if I accept this, I'm going to get a pitch. And, but they're in my space, so should I do it? And I, I <laughs> say on the podcast, just connect with me. But, uh, and, See, you, and, but that's just it. It's, it's a lot of, you know, I mean, think about it. I forget, you know, there's a, there's a number. We, we talked Dunbar's, about it. Dunbar's, yeah. It does. Yeah, we talked about it before. The human brain can maintain 150 relationships, right? We know this. Now, how in the world, I mean, even me, 3,000 some odd whatever contacts on LinkedIn, I don't know. I wouldn't know which ones I could actually rely on if I was not consistently maintaining that network. Now, the ones that you've done business with and met face-to-face, -face, that's almost easier, right? Because, you know, they'll pick up the phone or they'll shoot you an email back or maybe just, you know, shoot you a text. But those people that you connect through commenting on some content or in some, uh, you know, uh, forum on LinkedIn or someplace else, uh, and all of a sudden you get a pop, like, hey, let's connect. I have this rule, so I'll, I'll accept the connection request, and then within 60 days, I sit down and I send them a note and say, hey, we connected you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, whatever. Uh, always love to talk to people that I've connected with just to extend the relationship. Uh, how about 15 minutes? Call it a digital coffee, whatever you want. And I send it to them, and I give them four days. And if they don't respond, I crush the contact out of my network. <laughs> <laughs> You're much more ruthless than me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, and I don't mean it's. I don't mean it to be ruthless. It, it, it's just that I, if I look at my network, I need to know that when yeah. I go to call on it, that those people will respond. How many times have you gotten a call? I got, actually, my business partner, I heard her get one this morning. Uh, picks up the phone. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm connected to who on LinkedIn? Yeah, no, I don't really know her. Yeah. Well, then how, what in the, what, what, what why? good is it? Right. Yeah. How is it <laughs> what, different than not being connected to that? Right. And then those that you connect with, right. Maintaining the network, you know, getting them today, getting connections is pretty easy. I mean, right. Through from Very Twitter easy. to Facebook to LinkedIn, you can get all these connections, but just because it's connected doesn't mean it's strong enough to support your weight. So then you've got to actually put in some effort, right? You have to have a phone call or go grab coffee at some point or, yeah continually interact. Um, it, to me, it's funny. If I connect with somebody on LinkedIn that I've never met and have not had on the podcast, have not talked to, whatever, it takes, it feels like it takes more effort to communicate with them just digitally for say three months until you get to that point where you kind of feel like you know each other versus just jumping on the phone for 15 minutes. It, it seems that accelerates that connection point. So one of the things that I do and recommend for all refs is that set aside some time each month and just go through your LinkedIn contacts. I do it alphabetically. Who have I not talked to in the last four months? And just shoot them an email. Hey, you got 15 minutes for coffee, right? Just to touch base, no agenda, what's going on. Or if it is going to turn into a prospect, do a little bit of research, right? But just keep that network you know, fed. It's like a, I'm now. I hate to use a garden analogy because I can kill anything that's green, but it is like a garden. Yeah. And if you don't take care of it once you get it, you're not going to be able to rely on it, and you're, and you're not going to survive off of it. And so, 100 percent accurate. And it, one of the smartest things I did during my career was take the calls from headhunters because yep. they were the connectors. You know, from the Malcolm Gladwell book, um, Tipping Point, because yep. they knew everybody in the industry. And I'd always take their calls. I'd always call them back. And if I wasn't interested in the job, I'd, I'd point them in the direction of people who were. But I'd ask, I go, who's making a lot of money? What's the hottest company out there? Who's hiring? What have you heard about this? And then I'd go, here's some, some people, my competitors. I'd give them. <laughs> 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 my competitors didn't, never lasted more than nine months at their job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> and and it was such a great tactic because all of a sudden you, your competitors are always have a new rep that doesn't know <laughs> what they're doing, doesn't know anybody. And all of a sudden I'm in the account. I know I go, they, they can't keep people. How good of a product company can it be if they can't keep a good salesperson? 
<laughs> and then I would call my ex competitor and ask them about all the customers because they'd have a you know probably a bad taste in their mouth about their last you know account their last right. company. Um, and I also learned from my dad, and I, I used to, he was a sales rep, and so was my mom. And he had this habit of meeting somebody for breakfast every morning. And whether it be another sales rep, a customer, and he goes, look, I can have, you know, a great meeting and still get to work by nine. Right. And I, I got to eat, you know, and everybody likes a nice breakfast. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's that, I, I mean, I see all the stats. I mean, back when we started selling, it was a face-to-face deal. Like yeah, I was, I mean, 100%. I flew all over the country. Yeah, you know, it's hard actually for me to look back and think at those years where I had, you know, 140,000 air miles all domestically, never left the continental U.S. Because it's, you know, out Monday to a different city Tuesday night, different city Wednesday night or Thursday morning, home Friday or Saturday, and you do that all the time. Um, and then you see the stats come out that say most people today prefer to be sold to virtually. I kind of understand why. I get it. But it's it's also easier to say no to somebody who's not sitting in front of you, oh, by the yeah. way. Um, I get it. But there is nothing like sitting down face to face. Do I want to work with you? Do you want to work with me? Can we actually make this work? Like it's, There is a connection there that shows how, how important it is to the person who's taking the time to meet with you and shows them your level of interest and that you're willing to, to take the time to grab you know, coffee or breakfast. I'm actually going to steal that breakfast thing. Oh, it that. is. And you know, I don't do it you know, because I'm, I'm a health freak and I exercise in the morning. But you know, when, I, when I was a full-time rep, I always tried to at least once a week – meet with another rep within my ecosystem who was selling into the same market as me. Sure. And, you know, that was kind of before LinkedIn was LinkedIn. What, what did you do? You, you swapped, you know, your app database with each other. Yeah. You know, and it may not have been that current, but at least you had something. <laughs> you know, because before LinkedIn, you, you know, you'd open up your laptop and you'd have some spreadsheets from some trade show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut and paste that. Oh, yeah, painful. And, and to the face and face to face thing. Let's say you have a serious problem with your house. Like I had this weird problem uh, where the, my pipes would rattle when you turned the water on. Now it was insanely disturbing, uh, you know, because every time someone would turn the water on, it would go bo 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 bo. Now I can't explain this on the phone. I can't go to YouTube to figure this out three plumbers before we figured it out. I had my <laughs> water meter changed and it was this solenoid that, you know, and this one plumber figured it out. Now think about the, someone's business. Everybody's got business problems. You have business problems. I have business problems. You know, we can go and talk to each other, but if somebody really sits down, like, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? You know, those things take dedicated, focused time. And you're not going to get that on the phone, through email, through LinkedIn. Oh, no. The, you get more from a human interaction than you're going to get just reading articles, especially the way people read today, right? Or watching other people's videos. Like There is something that, that I don't know, it, there's a connection, right? There's a, there's a, hey, you've been in the trenches too. Um, you know, I would love to hear your experiences. And there's something uh, that makes it more uh, real that you can attach to when you're sitting across from them. And it's the same thing when you're selling to somebody, you'll be able to tell it's, I love email because it's fast and it, you know, we can move stuff forward. But when you're talking to somebody and they say, Hey, these are the three problems. Like problem number one is this and problem number two and problem number three is this. And man, let me tell you, like you hear it, yeah. right. And you hear, okay, he may have given that to me third, but we need to dive into that because that was where we saw the emotional reaction, the, the energy level come up, the fear. <laughs> and that's <laughs> come, it. I come mean, in. Where do you spend the end, the last month of the quarter? It is always in front of customers. Why? Oh, yeah. You have no sense of what's in that CRM is real, how real it is, where it is. You have to talk to people. And, and why hasn't psychotherapy thrived online? <laughs> right? have you have you ever so this may be too much information but I have let's like get I said, into it yeah. like i said two divorces right so i have done uh therapy with my shrink um on the when i have been on the road and it is so awkward yeah. 
Yeah. It is like now sitting in the room, we can have truly dynamic conversations where I can we can, we can iterate on a point, and the communication is much more than just verbal um, or visual. I can tell more from you know the way her voice fluctuates. Auditory, I get things when I'm present that I don't get through, you know, the Skype camera or whatever. Or, you know, I see her looking at you know something off in the distance, and now I'm wondering, well, what's more important than me, right? Because I don't know what's off screen. It doesn't work. <laughs> it just it does. doesn't work. Yeah. And I think that's the quintessential example that you, you will spend a half hour getting there, a half hour getting back and a, whatever it's 50 or 60 minutes in front of the person. And you probably leave feeling 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it is something about it. Maybe we can't describe it, but that's why we do it. Right. Without a doubt. And the other thing I don't see people do is not only getting in front of them, but when you have those meetings and you, you mentioned the ACT database, today we turn those, I mean, we, myself and my business partner, both parts of two or three, what we call lead groups, right? So these are all sales reps that are actually not in our, they're not selling the same thing we're selling, but they're accomplished reps in different markets. And we get together uh, for coffee or lunch or breakfast or something twice a month. And we go, okay, I want into this account. Who do you know? You want into those accounts. I know this person and that person, and I'll make the introductions for you. And so what I often see is in, when it comes to the network, people aren't asking for, Hey, who else, who do you think else I should talk to? Just like we tell people to ask for referrals. Who else do you think I should talk to and, and continually reach out with no agenda other than, hey, this person said you were worth talking to and I'd love to get your perspective on something. And, and how do most people prospect? They do it just the opposite. They go right. to level three instead of level one to level two. And right. I'm, I'm using LinkedIn um, terminology here. Uh, but, you know, level zero is the people that you've actually met. They know you, who you are. You have some kind of connection. You've helped each other. Right. You've given to them. And that that concept is just unthinkable. I, I did a video that I posted on LinkedIn. I talk about giving and everyone, what do I give? <laughs> they have no idea what they give because they've been taught to ask for 15 minutes, earn the 15 minutes. And I, I don't know if you've been on LinkedIn where you change your job or you have a birthday and you get bombarded with the, oh, yeah. the button pushers. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and they, the, the intent is nice, but the effect is actually negative because you're bombarded with a hundred of them and all they did is hit a button. So you knew there wasn't much commitment and anybody who's in a you know real services business like real estate or financial services, birthdays are critical. What's the most important day of your year? <laughs> right? And when somebody close to you forgets it, how does it feel? But how, uh, about, how about if a stranger calls you the day before or the day after? How was your birthday? Looking forward to your birthday? Who does that? Right. Well, and it's like it's, people think it's just easy. Oh, it's somebody's birthday, so I'll just go like that. Or they just got a new job, so I'll like it. Yeah. Or I'll send an email and I'll just use – I love the AI-generated stuff that we're starting to see, even oh. in text messages. Oh, hey, congrats on the new job. Okay, so you took two clicks instead of three or instead of <laughs> one. That's awesome. I feel great. I feel really – that's great. Do you even know what new job I have kind of thing? Yeah. Take them in and write two sentences. You know, Make it about them. Uh, and do that outreach. It, it, that goes back to that nurturing point we were talking about earlier. And that's it, that connection that you're, you're establishing with no ask. Right. Because what always comes after the compliment, it's the ask, right? It's the, hey, let's get together for 15 minutes. Let's, uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Or, or here's my PDF about what I do. And you're like, ugh. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know each other. And I've got to read your book. Yeah, I don't want to. Why am I reading this? You haven't shown me that it's worth my time to read it. Let's just have and, a and how many bloggers send you a request to like their stuff when you've never uh, even seen them before? Yeah. Hey, do me a favor. I just put up this article. Would you like it? And then you've got people that'll just do it uh, because we're, you know, we're getting very Pavlovian about it uh, and not even realize what they're liking. That they could be liking some serious crap. Yeah, and th and that's it. And it's like when somebody I see them constantly commenting on my stuff. And they ask me, I'm all for it. But if you're a complete stranger, not, not only do I have to read it to make sure it's even applicable to my audience, uh, I don't know you. And, right. you know, <laughs> and I think people who really can use these tools, who really can leverage them, it is so powerful. 
and you have to be able to do it strategically, right? So I, I see a lot of um, – <laughs> I see a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. But they don't block the time. They don't think about it, right? Yeah. Because of the speed, and we, we kind of talked on this last podcast, we did, that if you don't put in the time, if you don't build in the time, we used to call it staring out the window. If you don't put in the time to seriously think and apply the brain cells, right, th- to anything that you're doing, whether it be maintaining a network or any part of sales, uh, you're going to just start running and not even, not even know the hurdle ahead of you, how high it is. And I don't see a lot of people proactively thinking through how do I network, how do I maintain it, how do I provide value, and they always have they, they always hit you with the ask first. Yeah. Hey Chad, will you like this? Oh, and by the way, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Stop sending me bad emails. Right. Yeah. You don't know me. We might even be competitors. <laughs> Who knows? And I think the time blocking thing is critical because that's the number one power tool of time management. Is you know block. Right. You know, even if it's 15 minutes a week where you are on there, you know, make sure your profile looks good. There's just so much uh, free advice on how to use LinkedIn and Twitter and whatever you use. And I have a friend who's a realtor and she just cooks on Facebook and she ever she knows everybody in her geography, in her territory. And she has become the realtor for everybody. And she just lives on Facebook and it works for her. And if you can make this work for you compared to, you know, the old school of writing out a card or something, it it is insanely powerful. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you really do try and build networking into your daily routine. I, I don't think it's something you have to set much time aside for. But if you don't connect with people consistently, you're forgotten. And today is a very noisy world, and there's a lot of interruptions. But if you add a little bit of value to people's lives, and it's kind of like learning about your territory and building up that network. And, you know, the Dunbar rule of 150 people, I'm not sure that that... uh, really exists as much anymore because you have so many connections and if you're sharing something that's valuable to other people if you're liking if you're commenting on things you become known and all of a sudden people are aware of you your company and what you do and so much of sales is really timing it's being at the right place at the right time saying the right things that's why this interruption based selling that we have today of cold emails and cold calls is so ineffective. First, everyone's doing it. Second, everyone's doing it wrong. And third, people are sick of it. And that's why I came up with the course, Start the Conversation, Get the Meeting. And this week, for the people who are taking it, I have a case study uh, already. Somebody, one of the early students, is just killing it and having a ball, crushing his number, getting these meetings. And I'm going to put probably a sound bite of it on the end of the podcast next week where he's just amazed that he's getting these type of relationships where people are just sending him pictures of their kids and we're connecting as human beings and you can say well what does that have to do with business well to to have somebody tell you the truth to have them give you your time there has to be a trust factor in there and you're not going to build trust just off your product knowledge it's going to be off of rapport and rapport is based off of commonality so when you learn how to do this and really kind of i break down both the science and the art of doing it then you will be able to be so much more effective and then you can build a team around you and then outsource it so i'm at this kind of level three of it right now where i've outsourced it and I, my, my schedule is just booked, you know, six weeks in advance, and it's now systematized. And that's what I want to do is help you get a system for you to get into the accounts that you want to get into. Is it, does it work 100% of the time? Nothing does with people. Nothing ever will. But th- this is really the, the best approach that I have found. I've been teaching it in person for five years. Now you can get it online. Go to b2brevenue.com, look under training, and what you'll see is it's a year-long access to the course, so there's office hours, so we're already into eight months of office hours, so that's 16 hours of additional 
case studies and examples. And uh, there's a lot of people who want private uh, consulting on it. And I'm, I do that under the auspice that I can record it and share it with the team uh, that, that's taken the course. So you really get a sense of what's working today. And what, what we find is that the, the little differences that you make as far as the day of the week, uh, the amount of time in between has an enormous impact, and it varies, of course, by person. So make sure you're checking that out. If you're having a hard time closing complex sales or really coming up with a system for that, I have Closing the Complex Sale course as well. There's also two free courses there. There's one on your LinkedIn profile, and believe me, a lot of people need that. It's just something that people just don't understand the nuances of LinkedIn. I show you how to get around the bug of your company logo not showing up, which is about 80% of the profiles has that. You know, all the things about the photo, all the things about your tag, your name, everything that it really should look like so that people will see that you kind of get it and it'll be presentable. So you can check that out. It's free. Uh, no coupon code. The Nudge course about AI and how I use Nudge. You, you got to check out this course. It'll only take you about couple of hours to go through it, but I show you exactly how I use it. So look under how to use AI to do my prospecting for me. The coupon code is nudge. Make sure it zeroes out because I don't want to, I have no customer support for the free courses. I'm sorry. I'm just really busy. <laughs> and just put the word nudge in there. That's the coupon code for the course. The coupon code for the product is brutal truth. So, and I put that in the course as well, but it really, it'll show you how to use nudge to really scour your total addressable market and come up with daily ideas of who to contact, who's most likely to be interested and what they care about. All of that will be brought to you. So you don't have to go spending your whole day about who to network with. Hey, full circle here on the topic. Also, really appreciate everybody who's connecting with me. Are you checking out Discover Org stuff? They had a big announcement with Bombora. Bombora tells people who's in market. Now, why is this important? Because uh, the most important is people who call you. The second most important people are people who are looking for what you do, who feel the pain already. They're, they're, they're not latent prospects. They're active prospects, but they may not know about you, your company, and what you do but they're reading blogs, they're uh, searching for articles, and they're looking for stuff about the problem that you solve. So why is this critical? Because those are the people that the timing is right. So much of sales is timing. Think about it. Think of all the things you bought. You know, are you going to buy a new car? If your car breaks down, you're in the market. If your car is 20 years old, you're in the market. If, um, if, if, if you just saw your neighbor get a better car, you're in market. And that's the people that you want to talk to. Do you want to talk to the person who bought a new car last year? Probably not. Not in market. So people who are in market are the next most valuable people other than the people coming to you. So please make sure you're doing that. As far as the sales questions podcast, you can email me your questions. I'll get to them as fast as I can. I do not reply to 99% of the LinkedIn requests because I get like 30 a day. And I, I just, I got to the point where I was just overwhelmed. And I just said, if send questions, I answer via the podcast. And I apologize if that seems impersonal. I just, I, I spent the summer going crazy. Here it is the end of August and I'm just going nuts. And I'm like, I haven't taken a day off the whole summer and I've kind of going a little crazy. So I, I need to back off on certain things. So please, you can submit all the questions. I'll answer them via the sales questions podcast. Please search through those because it's a couple of years of stuff in there. There might be something directly applicable. Career questions are on the career advice podcast. So those are kind of sales independent and I really try to help people about what I see people doing wrong with their careers and kind of my viewpoint on where the market is going, where the money is, where the happiness is, how to negotiate certain things like working from home, how to start your own gig, have a side gig, kind of my journey in doing this. And 
I, I try and debunk a lot of the BS out there on that podcast, not selling you anything. You know, if you want the course is great. If you don't, peace and be with you, <laughs> you know, because I'm fine with it. But but don't just ask me all the questions that are in the course and try and get it for free, though. But, I mean, plus, you need, and why is it, why is it a year? Because you need to, like, try it, see, get some results, share your work, see what other people are doing. And that is how you learn. It, it, it's not just knowledge. It's action. It's results. It's getting things done. That's it. Appreciate you listening. We'll see you next time.